Hello everybody, I'm Ajit K. Mishra. I'm here again with another session on interpersonal relationships. In my last session, I talked about some very important aspects of interpersonal relationships. In this session, I'll be talking about some other aspects of interpersonal relationship. Transaction is very, very important when it comes to workplace. Without a proper understanding of transaction, it may turn out to be a problem for all of us as professionals to um, you know, get along with the workplace challenges. So it's, it's advisable that we understand transactions. So when I say transactions, I mean the transaction analysis developed by Eric Byrne. So transaction analysis can be uh, used to improve communication and it can also be used to understand our own way of behaving and communicating with others. So if I'm comfortable with uh, my understanding of transactions, it will mean that I can contribute quite positively to the overall environment at the workplace. So the main idea uh, behind uh, transaction uh, is that now, our, our brains have three distinct ego states. That's what Eric Byrne has identified. The parent state, the child state, and the adult state. You can, you can look at uh, this diagram and figure it out. The parent, the, the adult, and the child uh, ego states. So in the workplace, uh, we can see examples of transactional analysis at all levels. Uh, such as uh, between, between managers uh, uh, and employees or supervisors and employees, uh, among co-workers uh, and colleagues and between department heads of an organization. So we can find it everywhere in the workplace. There are three types of transactions we, we need to be familiar with. So the first is complementary transaction. That means a transaction is agreeable to both the parties. And this is the best form of transaction. When a transaction is complemented, it actually leads to its desired results. So complementary transaction uh, will mean that uh, people are uh, at the same ego states and when they are, uh, you know, or communicating with each other, they can understand the message, the, the very way it has been, um, you know, communicated. So therefore, a uh, complementary transaction is, is uh, uh, the, the most important form of transaction and the most desired form of transaction as well. Complementary transaction can happen between adults. It can also happen between the parent and the child ego states. Let's take an example of a complementary transaction. If an employee comes late to uh, the office, the manager, the supervisor, the boss, uh, uh, for example, can uh, tell the employee uh, that uh, uh, you always come late to the office. So the manager is in the parent ego state. And if that employee promptly says, I really apologize uh, for coming late and uh, I'll, I'll take care that uh, uh, it doesn't happen again in future. So it becomes complimentary. The boss wants the employee to realize that he or she is coming late the employee to apologize for coming late, the employee to assure not to come late again. That is the intention, the objective of the boss. When the employee accepts it and assures that he or she will not be coming late, then the complimentary transaction is complete. Another example. Imagine two co-workers who worked on a project and that project uh, uh, failed. And now the co-workers are evaluating the failed project. So
So both of them are in the adult state. So if one co-worker says, let's figure out what went wrong. So if it is a complementary adult to adult response, the other co-worker will say, yes, you're right. So let's get to work and find out what happened because of which this project failed. So that is an example of a complementary transaction because both of them are in the adult ego states. Therefore, they are behaving in a very matured way. The other type of transaction is crossed transaction or failed transactions, especially when the, the message that is sent to the receiver is not properly understood. Therefore, the response goes absolutely wrong. So that leads to crossed transactions. Just imagine a manager in the adult to adult state I might ask an employee uh, about a mistake in a certain report file. If that employee is in the adult to adult ego state, the response will be, yes, uh, thank you for pointing towards that error. I'll correct it and resubmit that report. But in crossed transactions, it won't happen. In crossed transactions, that employee might get back by saying, I'm sorry to say this, but why are you always criticizing my work? So it will go wrong. The, the transaction fails because the manager is an adult ego state, but the employee thinks that the manager is in the parent ego state, so the, employees, the employee becomes the free child and response to the critical parent through a very different ego state. So that, that leads to a failed transaction or a crossed transaction. The next one is ulterior transaction. Now this is very, very complex because multiple ego states come into play when uh, ulterior transactions happen. That means two messages are simultaneously conveyed at this, uh, and one a social message and then the other is a psychological message. So the social message is at the top and at the bottom you see the psychological message. So it appears like uh, uh, we are saying one thing but actually there is something else we are trying to convey. So most often such transactions are generally you know, left to the intelligence of the receiver to decode and understand. So we generally come across a social message and a psychological message in ulterior transactions. So let's take an example. Two uh, children are playing together and their mothers are also standing by in a park. Suddenly uh, the girl child bites the boy and then the mother of the girl child tells the mother of the boy child, oh, I'm so sorry my daughter bit your son. Now, it may happen that the, the mother of the boy will say, oh, that's okay, both of them are kids, I can understand that. That may be the social message, just to avoid any you know, social um, uh, conflict or so socially unacceptable situation in the park. The mother can reply in that manner. The first mother can say, um, sorry, the, the mother of the boy can say, they are just kids, I can understand. But on a psychological level, the mother of the daughter might be thinking, my daughter did the right thing by biting your son. He deserves that. Simultaneously, the mother of the boy child might be trying to say that, I want my son to bite your daughter someday in the same manner. So that will be the psychological messages which they may be conveying to each other through 
in their surface level social messages. So that is how ulterior transactions generally take place. I mean, when it comes to, uh, you know, sub-cultural uh, groups, people generally engage in ulterior messages. They send messages on a social level. They have a psychological message as well. Only those people who are into that particular subculture, they can easily figure out the psychological message as well. So in, in uh, flirtatious relationships, ulterior transactions play a major role. That brings us to a very important aspect of interpersonal relationships, strokes. According to Eric Byrne, the founder of uh, transactional analysis, a stroke is a unit of recognition. It is also a unit of attention which provides stimulation to an individual. There are two big categories of strokes, positive strokes and negative strokes. These strokes can be both conditional or unconditional. Just take a look at this uh, figure and uh, you can easily understand how uh, positive uh, strokes and negative strokes along with the conditional and the unconditional uh, are combined in order to um, you know, communicate very important messages um, you know, in a social situation. So positive unconditional and positive conditional uh, strokes. For example, uh, if it is a positive conditional stroke, it will show a sign of approval. Approval for doing something. So, uh, you know, we need to earn these strokes. So whenever we do something positive, we can receive approval for such, um, you know, actions of ours. So those uh, uh, strokes will be called positive conditional strokes because we generally receive such strokes for doing certain things. On the other hand, there are positive unconditional strokes which we generally receive for being in a certain way. So, and that will lead to acceptance of the person. We generally receive these strokes uh, unearned. There's no need to earn these strokes. For example, if somebody has become extremely reliable, somebody has become extremely dependable, somebody has become credible in one's behavior and approach, your organization is certainly going to recognize you time and again repeatedly. So that way, that person is not going to earn that particular stroke because that particular stroke will come to the person in an unconditional manner, a positive stroke in an unconditional manner for being in a certain way. So, and then there is a negative conditional stroke. So negative uh, conditional strokes are generally um, you know, given to us for doing something. So unlike positive conditional strokes that give us approval, negative conditional strokes give us disapproval. So it, it can lead to criticism. It can also lead to constructive criticism. We generally get it for doing something wrong. On the other hand, negative unconditional strokes we generally receive such strokes for being in a certain way. For example, if somebody is unreliable, the person will continuously receive negative unconditional strokes because that, that may be rejection, that may be uh, humiliation. So it will be a rejection of the person and it will be very, very disrespectful and hurtful. So when we look at the stroke economy, it's very important that we understand uh, that we, we continuously receive strokes at the workplace. We continuously give strokes at the workplace. There are these positive conditional strokes, um, approval strokes. There are positive unconditional strokes, acceptance strokes. There are negative conditional strokes, disapproval strokes, and there are negative unconditional strokes, which are rejection strokes. So in order to understand how strokes actually, uh, you know, uh, determine the way our interpersonal relationships figure in the workplace. We 
uh, need to understand how we build our interpersonal relationships at the workplace and how we nurture those relationships, whether those relationships actually result in something great, something positive, something meaningful for all of us or not, is something that we all need to check, we all need to look for. With that, we come to the end of this session. I'm sure you have taken note of these things and you are going to explore these uh, aspects of interpersonal relationships yet further so that you can uh, improve and strengthen your interpersonal skills. Thank you for being with me. Bye-bye.